Good morning. Isn't it a isn't it a good and joyful thing to gather together on Sunday morning to sing praises and worship our Lord? I want to extend a welcome to any visitors we have this morning, and uh, if you would please stand, and we'll we'll sing our call to worship, "Family of God." I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Joined us with Jesus as we travel this sod. For a part of the family, the family of God. standing, we will say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning. Please be seated. Uh, a bunch of different announcements. Um, one that uh, I'll get up on my soapbox for here, um, then I probably won't be going in order. But w we need volunteers for VBS, for Sunday school, and the youth program. If you think about it, if we don't build our children's ministry and our youth ministry, this church will slowly die. We need to bring in the younger folks. We need to bring in those children and teach them about the church and raise them up in the church to keep our church alive and growing. So now I'll get off my soapbox. But seriously, if you're sitting in the pew, you're able to sit with kids and teach as well. So we need you all. Uh, Sunday, May 2nd, we are here to worship. We have confirmation class at 11 and handbells at 5. And uh, it's the last day for Mother's Day's names. And uh, I don't have the insert today. But um, 9 a.m., prayer at the altar, uh, Tuesday morning. I encourage you all to come. It is a wonderful time. And I will be able to join you all once again because I have my last final on Monday morning, so pray for me. And then I get a whole week's break before my next semester starts. <sighs> but hey, it's a week off. Um, what else is coming up? Wednesday, um, yes, your pastor has been selected for jury duty, so I will not be in the office Wednesday. I am sorry, but hopefully I'll be back by the time uh, praise team and Bible study kicks off. So 4 p.m., uh, we're doing a praise team practice, or maybe? We'll play that one loose. Maybe praise team practice. Uh, 5 p.m. Bible study and children's church. Uh, what else is coming up? Friday, uh, game night is on, right? And you're doing what? Yeah, about 12, 13, you said? Okay. So that means there's plenty of open seats. Come, enjoy game night. Have some fellowship time with your friends. Uh, there will be no confirmation class next Sunday. Apparently, it's Mother's Day, and moms like to be surrounded by their children. So that is a good thing. I appreciate Kelly Price for reminding me of that this weekend. Um, but I also need people willing to bring in a lunch for the youth during these confirmation classes. Right now, Kelly and Betty have been sort of taking care of a lot of that, but we could use some other families involved. See others. I talked about uh, Vacation Bible School and other help as well, but this one just for VBS. Please, please see Susan for more information on it. We need volunteers. We need crew leaders. We need classroom assistants. We need people to help coordinate games, activities, food, you name it. Okay. Uh, any others? 
Nope, that's it. All right, praise team. Let's hear you. Oh, yep, we have it. Sorry. We have an announcement back there. And but the sad thing is Rhonda actually told me about this ahead of time, and I forgot. So... <laughs> Give me the mic. This is a good one. Uh, through the diligence of our pastor, we have received a $1,000 grant to enhance our uh, online streaming. Uh, he worked really hard to get this grant. We need to show our appreciation to him. We got the check this week. And, and Regina for proofreading my grant, so thank you. <laughs> Yep. All right, Brenda. Okay, I've actually got two. Please look on the back of your bulletin, men. It has the dates that you're supposed to be ushers. If you cannot be usher on that particular Sunday, please turn around and call somebody uh, and let them know that you're not going to be able to be an usher. Um, it's, I forgot to let anybody know last week to announce that, but... Uh, your name's on the bulletin. It'll be monthly. Also, speaking of the pastor appreciation thing, because we do appreciate him, go ahead and mark June the 13th down, because that's going to be our pastor appreciation day, where we bring him stuff to show him and his family that we appreciate him, and it's, it'll be a fun day that afternoon. And the pastor for next year will be our own pastor, Mike. Okay? <laughs> Yay. I get to stay another year. I was worried. Hey, Brenda, we doing the homemade ice cream that day? Okay. Ooh. Uh, Milton, do we have uh, the men's group, or has it been delayed because of the Mother's Day stuff? Is it still going to be second Tuesday? Okay. All right. Okay. Well, Any others? Going once? Going twice? John. John. Awesome. Praise the Lord. All right. We will continue to pray for Heather. Got one more. All right. Glenda. This week is the beginning of Mother's Day's week. It's also Teacher's Week and Nurse's Week. So uh, thank y'all for all the teachers and the nurses to hear and all the, because y'all have done a wonderful job this year with all the COVID and everything. Applaud you. Thank you. One more. And we want to thank Miss Glenda for our little pretty thing. It's such a treat. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's all the announcements, if you would please stand for our hymn. Uh, Come thou fount of every blessing on uh, page 400 of your hymnal. And we'll sing all three verses. Thy fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. There is a mountain fixed upon it. Mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come. And I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He 
to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. O oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Is my heart, O oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. And if you would remain standing, we will say the affirmation of faith. Did you say sing or say? say. Oh, thank you. you. It, no. I'll say it. I am definitely not singing it. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father. it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Praise team and Janice, I really appreciate y'all. Do we have any prayer concerns or prayer? praises this morning. Mike McDaniel. Okay. Yes, Joyce. B sale. Okay. Who are you pointing at? Oh, Becky, okay. <laughs> Raylan Walters. Raylan Walters. Yes. And then also all of our students that are going to be FSA testing this week, please. All right, FSA testing and the students. Probably the teachers as well for that. And Nina, please, McLean. Nina. others? Pray for our country. In our country. Please, uh, yes. All right, oh, uh, I just ask the whole church to pray for Les. He's having a bad time. Oh, uh, Lord knows he's he's having trouble, and uh, Lord's going to take him out of this. He's going to help him if we all get together and pray for him. Oh, I, that's it. I, all right. I just, Amen. I would appreciate it. Yep, less and also for Brenda. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, Father God Almighty, we come to you this morning and ask for your healing hand upon our friends, our family, our neighbors. We lift up to you this great nation that we live in and seek your guidance to let the leaders that are there to understand your will and your calling upon this nation so that we can move forward. Lord, we lift up to you 
Mike McDaniel, Miss B, and Ryan Rylan Walters. Lord, we pray for Nina. We pray for all those students that are out there preparing for the FSA testing to help them have a clarity of thought and be prepared for this test and lift up the teachers as well that are administrating it. Lord, we lift up less to you. We pray for his healing. We pray for him and seek your wisdom, Lord, to seek your comfort and peace, Lord. We lift up Brenda as well and ask that you help her to have the strength and the courage to have the faith in you to get through these troubling times, Lord. We lift up to you Jimmy Alday and Laura Everett, Knox Brown and Eileen Kane, Gerald Coombs and Jeannie Early, Betty Franklin and Tracy Franklin. We continue to pray for Jenny Gonzalez and Lee Langley, Dr. Hayes McKay and Barbara Nelson. We lift up to you, Heather, as well, and Norman Rabone and Jack Russell and John Wyatt. Lord, we pray earnestly for all these families. We pray for our shut-ins and ask that you help us to stay in contact with them, to let them feel our love and our prayers to let them know how much we miss them here. We lift up Ted and Nancy, Betty Jackson, Barbara McIntosh, and Bonnie Shackleford. Lord, hear our prayers. Listen to our hearts. And bring forth your angels for miraculous healings, Lord. In your heavenly name, amen. Our scripture reading today is from Matthew. And believe it or not, it actually ties in with the sermon somehow, we'll find out. But Matthew 22, verse 37 to 40. Jesus had been asked a question, and this is his response. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. I chose this one because as I was thinking about our sermon topic, you know, Jesus really broke it down into something very simple. If you understand these two principles, to love God and love others, you're winning. You're on the right side of the team. You know the right answer. Two simple phrases, and it locks up what our faith is about. He was a pretty smart teacher, pretty amazing prophet, and our wonderful Lord and Savior. As, uh, as the ushers come forward for a time of offering, um, Shout out to all those that are helping with the carpet fund. It is growing and growing. And hopefully, like I said, by the end of the summer, we will have new flooring in our fellowship hall and eventually the church. Pray with me, please. Dear Lord God, I ask that you bless these tithes and offerings. Allow them to multiply so that we may do your ministry here in this town and in our community and across the world. Lord, we are building up the storehouse for the future ministries you call this church to. And we pray that you continue to guide us with wisdom and grace in how to administer these funds. In your name we pray, amen.
please stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Does that sound a little better? Okay. <laughs> I was like, why am I not hearing myself? But if we take a look over here, this young lady, and what's your name? Huh? Mariah has a lovely bracelet on. And do we sometimes wear things to remind us of stuff? Yeah? Does that bracelet remind you of anyone? Maybe like who gave it to you? Yeah? So... And it has all those little charms on there. Now, do you think that we do things out there that remind us of who Jesus is? Like, if we put our hands together, what does that remind us to do? Huh? Luke, do you know? This doesn't look familiar, like praying hands? Yeah? Yeah, praying hands? If we open up the Bible, does it remind us that we're supposed to read it? Yeah? If we open up a hymnal, does it remind us that we're supposed to sing? See? We have all these things out there to remind us of things we're supposed to do for God, right? We're supposed to pray, and we're supposed to read the Bible, and we're supposed to sing, right? Now, like, what's a song that you guys might remember? Do you, do you guys ever sing, Jesus Loves Me? Yeah? That's a pretty easy one, right? But it's really important. So when we see things like bracelets, like watches, like rainbows, we can remember that Jesus loves me and you and you and you, right? Exactly. Because who's the best? What's the best Sunday school answer you guys remember? Shout out, Jesus. Remember, that's the answer you always give. Yep. But he is out there, and he is ready to be there with you each and every second of the day. And that's amazing. Now, if I put my hands together this time, what do we know to do? Oh, come on, I just told y'all. When you put your hands together, these are your praying hands, right? So put your praying hands together. You ready? You going to put your hands together? No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's like, yep, it's good. <laughs> and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the things you place before us to remind us of your great love for us, how much you love the children and the adults, and the youth, and everyone on this world. We thank you for that, Lord, and we ask that you just continue to watch over these precious children each and every day. Help them to go strong in you, Lord, in your heavenly name. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me up here. I really appreciate it.
you going to go over to the box? Will I ever get a chance to look in the box? Or is it only for kids? Only for kids? Figures. <laughs> If you would, uh, please remain seated for our next hymn, which is Nothing But the Blood, page 362 in your hymnal. And we're going to sing uh, verses 1, 2, and 4. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me bright as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part in this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you all once again for singing. So this morning, tying in from last week, if you remember last week, we talked about the new church as it was just coming about after Jesus' ascension and the things that the church did to grow. Well, today we're going to take from that and start looking at individually what things we might need to do within ourselves so that we have the right spirit in church that will help the church grow. We're going to be taking a look at two different but related passages, one a parable that Jesus taught us and one from the Apostle John as he describes things about God. We want to look at this and figure out our individual responsibilities. First, we'll start with a parable, and we're going to try to answer a couple questions that came up from last week's sermon. How do we grow the ministry, and where is our source of growth? If you have your Bibles with you, please turn to John 15, verses 1 through 8. Again, that's John 15, verses 1 through 8. And it's the parable of the vine and the branches. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. <clears throat> so why is it that throughout the Bible, a vine is used to describe our walk with God? 
again and again that it is used. And I started thinking about it, and then God taught me a lesson about it this week. Well, actually, it was the latter part of last week, but um, I was in the backyard, and then we have some lovely shade trees back there. And I was like, well, it would really be nice to sit on a shade tree. Let me just go prune a couple branches up. And I got in there and realized that it was covered in vines. And every branch I cut, I would yank on, and this vine just wrapped around everything. It was intertwined over every single limb in that tree, I think. And then as I got deeper into it, the vine had spread to the other trees and to the shrubs, and I couldn't find the end of it. It was everywhere. And I started thinking about this parable and how that relates to our world. You see, picture is the trees are the world. The vine is not part of the tree. Just like we as Christians, we are in this world, but we're not part of the world. We are separate. And our growth is supposed to spread across the entire world for God. That's the, the parallel here is as vines, as Christians, we need to branch out just like that vine did in my backyard that caused me such headache. And I think it was like a full trailer full I took over to Donald's. So it was a lot. But we have to picture the world like that. Our walk has to be getting out there. We have to spread out there. But we have to stay connected to that vine, to strive to stay in the light. Just like that vine in my backyard, there was parts of it that were growing up and were bright and vibrant. But there were parts that were back in the darkness that had withered and broke easily. And the same is true for our Christian walks. If we are not seeking heavenly nourishment, if we are not trying to get into the scripture, if we are not in prayer, we are going to wither and die, just like parts of that vine did. Our first lesson in this parable is that we have to bear fruit. If we are to be tied to Jesus without bearing fruit, then we will be cut off will wither and die. This is big. So unless you are being saved with your last dying breath, this parable says you have to do something with your salvation. You have to bear fruit. But how do you do it? Is it simply taking someone and leading them all the way through to baptism in Christ and salvation? Is that the only fruit? Is that the only way to bear fruit? No. But so often we think it is. We think that we have to take someone off the street and bring them all the way to Christianity to bear fruit. No. We have to take someone off the street and give them a word of God. And then maybe that person that's in church sitting next to us, we have to encourage them. We bear fruit in so many different ways. Some people do it by teaching Sunday school. That is a true bearing of fruit. Doing Bible studies, praying with one another, all ways to bear fruit. But there's so many other ways. That person in the church that writes that little card of encouragement for you, they're bearing fruit because they put a smile on your face. They helped remind you that God loves you. That person in the church that does a little gift basket for you. The person in the church that just walks up and hugs you. That is bearing fruit. Fruit comes in all shapes, all sizes. And it's up to us to bear it, to grow it, to nurture it. One of the biggest ones is living out a Christ-like life. That every day when we're out in the world... People see Christ in you. That is a way you can bear fruit. I actually think that's one of the, probably the biggest ones or most important ones. 
Do you have any idea how often I get the complaint from people, oh, I don't go to church because it's full of hypocrites? I hear that so often. There has to be a difference. People will say, well, I don't see any difference between someone who goes to church and someone in the world. Yes, I get it. The church is supposed to be full of the sick. But if we're in here and we're receiving heavenly medicine, shouldn't we be getting better at some point? Shouldn't we be following God more? Should we stop cursing a little bit more? Should we lessen how much we hurt people? Should we just stop doing wrong eventually? And then maybe we start showing more love. We start helping more people. That's how we do it. That's how we stay connected. That's how we grow. When we're in church, there has to be a difference between the people in the church and who is outside. We have to show that difference. And it does take time. Like I said, it is heavenly medicine that we're seeking. Because you have to think about what happens if we don't show a difference, if we don't show progress. Take a look at verse 6. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. I am not sure about y'alls, and see, I'm trying to be more southern, but I don't want to be a withered branch. I do not want to be cast into the eternal fires of hell. I want to go to heaven, and the only way I could do that is through bearing fruit, through growing in the ministry of God. I want to be nourished by that holy vine, to seek out Jesus everywhere I could find him, to learn from him. That is what we need to do, because if we don't do it, we know the consequences. Bearing fruit is important. It's what connects us. It's what helps us grow individually and helps the church to grow. But as we move from bearing fruit to this other scripture, and believe me, they are connected. Eventually we'll find out how. But in 1 John chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, the Apostle John is describing the relationship with God. It says in verse 13, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. I want you to notice some of these parallels here. The first one, Jesus is doing this parable, and he's talking about staying connected to the vine. And here John is talking about the relationship with God, that you have to be in love with God to stay connected. You have to be in God and then God in you. That parallelism is strong throughout Scripture, talking about that tight relationship. It goes a long way to showing how we stay connected. True love. But for a moment, let's try to just figure out what does God's love look like? Many of us are parents. Most parents love their children, I think. We'll work two jobs, right, to make ends meet just to give our child a better chance, a better life than what we had. That when that toddler, who is just learning how to walk, has that juicy juice, 
And he runs up and pours it over Dad's new entertainment system. We still love him, even though it means a new entertainment system. Not that Josh did that. I don't want you guys to think it was him. So it was actually me to my father, um, but he still loves me. You know, and when that child starts growing up, and they hit elementary school, and they start sports teams, and they accidentally throw their ball through your kitchen window, you still love the child, don't you? You may discipline them and say, hey, no balls in the house, but you still love the child. Or here's a big one. When that child gets their license and starts driving and then sneaks away in your Jeep and backs into your neighbor's mailbox, you still love that child, don't you? He may have to work for a while to pay for the repairs. He's going to be punished, but you still love him. Well, think about us as God's children. Even when we mess up, in our young, youthful days, when we go out and drink too much, curse too much, gamble too much, do any of that stuff, God still loves us and he'll still forgive us, no matter what. When we hit our midlife crisis and say, I don't need to tithe and support the church. I need a new Mustang. Well, God still loves you. He may punish you by giving you very high insurance and a few speeding tickets, but God still loves you. Regardless of what we do, he loves us. He loves us before we are even born, and he loves us through eternity. He loves us more than we can ever love our own children. Let that sink in. We know how much we love our own children, and God loves us more than that. That's powerful. He loves us so much that he sacrificed his only son just to give us a chance for salvation. That's how much he loves us. And according to Scripture, we are to embody God's love. We are to try to show that to everyone. So what does it mean when we fail in that? When we fail to show someone love? When we go, well, I love this person, but I'm not talking to that person. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. We're not talking about the flower child of the 70s love. We're talking about real love. Love that sacrifices for one another. This is the love that Jesus showed us time and again in the Gospels. It is the love that God showed us. Look at the Old Testament scriptures. How many times did Israel fall away from God through the whole period of Exodus? And yet God continually reaches out to them, continually pulls them back to his heart and shows them love. By loving like this, we stay connected to God. We stay part of the vine. Love is recognizing when we have fallen. And we fall short often, don't we, as humans? We mess up. But when we do make mistakes, when we err, we are to humble ourselves and ask forgiveness. And then accept that forgiveness that God's grace gives. How many times do we ask God to forgive us But then we keep carrying it with us. We keep going, oh, I'm not worthy. I was such a bad person. Man, when I was 19, I did this. God just can't forgive me. But God, please forgive me. But oh, no, he can't forgive me. How many times do we do that? We have to accept that God's love, his grace, will forgive us regardless of the wrong we have done in our past. This concept is how that new church 2,000-some years ago stayed connected to God, stayed connected to the Christianity that Jesus taught us. It is allowing the love of Jesus to shine brightly within us, and that is the love that produces the fruit. This is how these two sections of Scripture are connected. We are to stay connected in the vine, and the way we do that is through love. And when we love, guess what? We produce fruit. It comes together as a full circle. That is what we're supposed to be doing. We need, no, we must love God and love one another. We must use that love 
to grow the ministry. It's interesting that through the act of communion that we're going to do here shortly, this is an act of love. This communion table represents how much God loves us. That he gave his son for us so that we could be saved. So that we could one day join him in heaven. That is powerful. That's what we're going to participate in. But before we participate in it, we have to do something. We have to come clean to God. We have to ask for his forgiveness and then we have to be willing to accept it. We have to accept his forgiveness, his grace, and walk with him each and every day. It is a massive struggle. It is hard. I know that. We all struggle with it. And that's why we have to come together. Just as that early church did that we talked about last week, we have to come together in fellowship. We have to come together and pray for one another. We have to come together and worship God together and grow in Him. Only through that will we have the strength to continue to walk on that narrow path. As the ushers and praise team, or actually Janice comes forward for the communion. I don't think you guys are singing, are you? No, okay. No, not yet. Okay. But as they come forward uh, to prepare this communion table here, um, I want you to think about that, to think about what this communion means to you, to what God did so that you could join him in heaven. That is powerful. It is amazing. All right, come on up and help me with this. Not quite talented enough. I'll probably put out the candles if I try to do it by myself. There I go. Okay. Make sure I just get the one. All right. I think I can see the screen from here. Christ, our Lord, invites all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Pray with me, please. Dear Heavenly Lord, we ask that you forgive us of our sins that you free us from these burdens. Allow us to rejoice in your presence always. In your heavenly name, amen. On the night which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat this. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks, and then gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offer for us. I just want to remind everyone, this is an open table here at the Methodist Church. You are all welcome as believers of Christ to come forward and share in communion.
May the Lord bless you and keep you safe always. Amen. Michelle will help you out. May the Lord bless you all as you continue to carry his word throughout the world. Amen. May the Lord bless you all, and may you carry his word to the ends of the world. Amen. Was there anyone that was unable to get up that needs it brought to them? you will please stand for our hymn of invitation just as i am on page 357 in your hymnal and it's verses one three and six just as i am
take this word with you as you go out into the world. Dear Lord, we ask for your courage, your strength, your heavenly protection as we go out carrying your word on our hearts to all the afflicted, to the sick, to the homeless, to the hungry, to our neighbors, friends, and family, Lord. Give us wisdom to lead them to you. In your heavenly and gracious name, amen. Amen.